Hello and welcome back to the Joy of Development. In the previous episode, we established our floor grid as an array of data points. We then used the perimeter of that grid to randomly place doors around the edge of the room. Currently, this technique isn't looking too much different than our previous one. But in this episode, that's going to change. Rather than placing our entire floor grid at once, we're going to start off by connecting each of the doors through a series of paths. If you want to keep up with this project, or if you just enjoy the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and smash that like button. Previously, when we established our grid, we tested it out by adding a floor instance for each point. Now that we know that it's working, we can disable that test. Then we're going to go over to our sequence, and we're going to connect the paths function. In the paths function, the first thing we want to do is we're going to add one row and one column of floor tiles. I'm doing mine directly across the center. However, you don't have to do this. You could offset it any way you like, and even make it random, as long as it fits within the size of your room. So for our room tiles Y4 loop, we'll set the Y value as the index, and we'll set the X value as room tiles X divided by 2. And in just the same way for our X4 loop, we're going to set the index as our X value, and we'll set the Y value as room tiles Y divided by 2. Next, we'll check to see that place floor doesn't already contain that tile. If it does, we don't want to place a second one. If it hasn't already been placed, we'll move on and we'll add a new floor instance. After adding the new instance, we'll add it to our placed floors and we'll remove it from unplaced floors. Now if we preview the game, you can see that there's two lines of floor tiles intersecting each other at the center of the room. Now with those paths set, we're going to want to set another path for each door that extends out into the room until it intersects with an already existing path. This is why after spawning our doors in our previous video, we added our entry point to our door array because we want our entry point to have a path as well. We'll be running a for each loop off of our door array, and we'll follow that up with a for loop that runs for the max dimension of our room. We want our for loop to be a for loop with break, so that when the floor reaches an intersection, we can stop adding new tiles. Now depending on the door's rotation, we're going to need to extend the floor out in different directions. To figure out our direction, we're going to use a few select nodes. The first select node will check if the rotation is over 1. If it is, we know we're starting at one of the two far sides of our room, and we need to count backwards rather than forwards. To do that, all we have to do is multiply our index by minus 1. We'll plug that into our select node's A pin, and we'll plug the regular index into the B pin. We'll take that result and we'll add it to our door's location to find out where we're placing our tile. To hopefully clarify this for you a little more, I'm going to go back to the set door tiles function, and in here you can see that our top side and our right side have rotations that are higher than 1, while our bottom side and our left side have rotations of 0 and 1. Now for our next select node back in the paths function, we're going to be deciding whether we're adding the index to the x or the y value. To do this we'll check if our rotation is even, and to do that we're going to use a modulo 2 on the rotation. This will give you the remainder of the number divided by 2. We check if that's equal to 0, and if it is, then it's even. When the result is even, we want to modify the x value. When it's odd, we want to modify the y value. Jumping back into our set door tiles function, you can see that the left and right side both have odd numbers for their rotation, and the top and bottom side both have even numbers. So we take the result of our select node, and we add it to our index. Then we'll need one more select node to decide between two in vectors. We'll use the same boolean check that we used on our last select node to decide whether we're using the results of our addition to swap out the x or the y value. If even is true, we swap out the x value, and if even is false, we swap out the y value. With all that set up, we'll check if our unplaced floor array contains that vector. If it does, we can move on. However, if it doesn't, we'll want to break the for loop. If we move on to placing the floor, we do the same thing that we've been doing all along. We add our instance, we add the location to the placed floor array, and we remove it from the unplaced floor array. With that set up, our paths function is complete. So we'll preview the game and make sure that it works. As you can see, all the doors are connected through a series of paths, and they're all accessible to the player. And if we walk up to one of the doors and open it, you can see that the entry point also has a path connecting it to the other doors. This could already work pretty well as a level layout, with the risk of falling off the edges and the narrow pathways. However, we want our rooms to have a little bit more volume to them. 
So in the next episode, we're going to be working on filling in patches of our room with a function that I call nucleation. After that, we'll have one more episode on filling in the walls, and this method will be complete. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. I'd also like to announce that today we're starting up a new Joy of Development Discord server. Feel free to join in so that we can start building our Joy of Development community. Thanks for watching and see you next time.